Hello! In a mad dash to the finish now, we're finally going to take a look at extending our own classes. It's not something we've done yet, but it's uh, very important in the way I actually made the game in the first place. <coughs> because we've got different types of ships and different types of perk and so on that are based on the original classes. So if we have a look here at the ship class, we can see at the moment that, that ship extends sprite, which means it takes everything a sprite can do and adds to it. Now to extend our own class we just shuffle this about a bit so we basically have the ship word there and a different name here. We're going to take a look at doing that now so I'm going to make a new class new action script class and I'll call this let's just call it other ship for now press OK and it's generated some code for us if yours hasn't make sure you type it in I'm going to import ship. Now, um, there's a chance we wouldn't have to do that if they're in the same package, but let's put it there anyway. Anyway, so we're going to import the class that this is based on, or extends, and then we're going to update this class definition here to say extends ship. So it's going to take everything a ship can do, plus whatever we happen to do in here. And all I'm going to do is make it bigger. So I'm going to scale it up. I'm just going to put scale, scale x equals scale y equals 2. And that'll set both of those to 2. And if I save that file, along with everything else, Find my level where I spawn ships. Where are we? What am I looking at here? Do perks, do ships, do bullets, do spawning. Here we go. And instead of spawning a ship, I'm going to spawn other ship. Save that and see how we go. We should notice now that we get some ships that are massive. And that's because they've taken everything a ship has <coughs> and just added the um, added the scale. So this other ship has literally nothing in it other than this line, but it still works because it's extending our original ship. We could make this a bit different. We could actually um, override some of the behaviour of a, of, a, of a ship. So if we look at our existing ship class and we can see we've got a, a function called update which is responsible for the way the ship updates itself. We could overwrite this function or override it as it's known. It would mean copying it all out which isn't be the, best <coughs> the best at the moment. This could have all been refactored into separate little functions and we could have just overridden maybe the way it moves but at the moment we're going to have to override everything unless there's something a bit simpler we can look at. Nope, <laughs> we're going to need to do it all. So I'm going to copy the entire contents of this update function. I'm going to copy that and hop back to my other ship. And I'm going to override that existing function. So I'm going to override public function update. Just check that it is the same. It doesn't take anything, it doesn't pass anything back, so we're okay there. So we're overriding an existing function of the ship class. <clears throat> I'm going to paste that code in and just make it do something different. So what, what's the most obvious thing we can do here? We could make it faster. So we could move forward at speed times three, so they're really quick. Save that and test the game again. So now this should be. Whoa. <laughs> I've got to import some of these classes. Import reusable code dot that. Still doesn't like it. Hmm. It's no longer getting to its own variables. That's weird. Are they set to private, I wonder? Yeah. So we can see the private 
um, operator there is stopping this subclass, that's what it's known as, this, uh, this other ship is a subclass of ship because it's based on it and the private modifier here means that a subclass can't use this variable so to be able to extend and then override bits of this ship class this has to be either protected or public so I'm going to swap it back to protected I'm going to do that with <coughs> any variable that a ship has that was private and save that class and now try it and you can see that it works now so a good little insight into private and protected there we should notice that the ships are a lot faster and double the size now if they ever appear yeah, very quick. So fast, in fact, that they don't ever get to me. They're too fast to make the turning circle worthwhile. But in a nutshell, that's what extending your own class does. There's much better uses of this. In the, um, the final game, what I had was a mothership instead of other ship. I actually had a mothership class, <coughs> which I don't have access to the original game at this, this very moment. But there was a big green circle ship that would just orbit around you. It wouldn't directly attack you, and it spawned existing. It, it spawned normal ships, and that was extended from this little ship itself. I'm actually going to get rid of my other ship class. I don't want that. Just undo what I did in here. Was that everything? In fact, we'll leave that one with protected. Save that. I'm going to show you a different way of extending a class here and this time we're going to do it in the FLA so if I hop to the flash file go to my library and just find my ship I'm going to go to the properties of it and instead of having this class called ship now I'm going to move this to be actually the base class and the base class is the same as the, the class name that you've put after the word extends in the class definition so I'm going to update this, the class name here to be ship1, but it's going to be based on ship. Press OK. So that class will pull in all the behavior of ship, but it will be known as a ship1 in, in code. So we need to update the level. This will all become, well, you'll see, see what I'm getting at in a second. So that, if I save it and test it, should work as it did originally. and that's back to normal. However, if I come back to the flash file, duplicate my ship 1, let's call it ship 2, we'll export it for ActionScript and again we'll base the class on a ship. Bear in mind this is an ActionScript file in the folder with the FLA that has to be, that has to exist, that base class. Press OK and let's just edit the look of ship 2. So I'm going to make it red or black. <laughs> there we go. Red ship. I'm just going to change the logic here. So we'll just say um, flip, a, flip a abstract coin, flip a coin, and if it's tails, make a ship 2 instead of ship 1. So I'm just going to put here if math.random why do I always put random? If math.random is less than 0 0.5, so 50% chance, s equals new ship 2. So instead of being a ship 1, it's going to be a ship 2. So there's a 50% chance of that. So we should get some red ships and some white ships, but they'll all behave the same because they're both based on a ship. And there we go, we get a red ship straight away. Let's just play it until we actually get a white one. And there you go. You can see we're getting both types of ship. That could carry on forever. If we had a third ship, duplicate this again, call it ship three, export it for action script, and again change the base class so it behaves as a ship. Press OK. Let's just edit this. This one can be a blue circle or something. I'm going to zoom in. 
totally lost myself. Gotcha. Let's delete you. And have a little sort of donut ship. Could centre it by doing it exactly in the properties, I'm not going to bother. Just going to have a blue circle as ship three. And update the logic of the level so there's a chance of spawning a ship three. I'm just going to lower that number to 0.4 and we'll toss another coin here. If math.random is less than 0 0.5 this time, s equals new ship three. So we've got three different ships that all work the same way. All because they're based on one piece of script and that's that's what's really useful about ActionScript files. They're so reusable, I guess. Let's just check that we actually get all three. I haven't seen a red one yet. There we go. Got much less chance of having a red one. Firstly because you've got to get less than 0.4 out of one and then after that there's a 50% chance it'll get replaced by the blue one anyway. I'm going to actually get rid of the third one. don't want any donut ships. So there's two different ways of extending your own code. The, the actual coding and extend of a class goes way beyond what I've actually shown you. But you know how to extend your code and how to override existing functions inside it. So that's quite useful. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.